Now we're going to start talking about dermatologic agents. There are three types of primary skin lesions that have been identified, the macule, the papule, and the vesicle. Variations of these lesions are named according to the size of the lesion. Um, secondary lesions include erosion, ulcer, fissure, crust, lichenification, atrophy, excoriation, scar, and keloid. When one is describing a skin lesion, it's important to accur accurately name the type of lesion by using um, this type of terminology. Location on the body and pattern of distribution are also important. Uh, timing and course should include whether the onset was acute or insidious. Also, the presence of any systemic signs and symptoms. Agents known to be harmful um, to the fetus include tritonium, lindane, and podophyllum. Um, geriatric skin is thinner and absorbs more than younger adults. Children absorb three times more than adults. And children under 12 generally should not be treated with group 1 or 2 topical corticosteroids. Pregnant and lactating women need to be especially careful about topical agents that are absorbed systemically. So factors affecting the extent of absorption. Um, these include characteristics of the drug and the characteristics of the administration vehicle. Absorption is increased when the skin is broken or inflamed. Uh, when improved hydration, the absorption of medication and the depth of pen penetration are enhanced. Topicals work by being absorbed into the skin. Their effect is local. Topical preparations are available um, in a number of products, including many combination products, corticosteroid products, and different strengths and anti-infectives of many kinds. Primary care providers should become familiar with the, a few of these products and treatment measures rather than trying to um, completely uh, master all of them. Superficial skin infections and acne are commonly treated in primary care. If the patient does not respond to standard care, he or she should be re referred to a dermatologist. Primary care providers should um, be able to identify suspicious lesions and refer patients promptly to dermatologists. Um, so patients um, can have these lesions removed. Topical therapy is unique because the skin is directly accessible for both diagnosis and therapy. Drugs used to treat skin problems can be applied directly to the site. All topicals can also be absorbed systemically. Um, for this reason, you need to consider the adverse effects of the systemic medication when you're ordering topical um, agents. This is especially true, again, for children, pregnant women, as well as the elderly. Factors that affect the extent of drug absorption of a, into the skin include the status of the skin, uh, the characteristics of the drug, and the characteristics of the administration vehicle. Absorption is increased when the skin is broken or inflamed. In addition, absorption increases in cases where skin integrity, integrity is compromised or the skin is thinner. Because of the vascular composition of skin, mucous membranes absorb medication in high concentrations. The vehicle or base also affects uh, per percutaneous absorption. The vehicle may hydrate the outer layer of skin by preventing water loss. With improved hydration, the absorption of medication and the depth of penetration are enhanced. Absorption of topical medications is slow and incomplete compared to drugs given orally. For optimal absorption, apply them to moist skin either immediately after bathing or after wet soaks. Uh, prescribing the appropriate amount of topical medication is also very important. Too large a tub may be very costly to the patient, yet a small tub may not include enough medication to cover the entire area. To estimate uh, the amount that should be prescribed, the rule of nines can be used.
This is a pictorial um, example of the um, rule of nines. For example, 180 um, would be um, adequate for chest or back. 45 um, grams would be um, adequate for one forearm. Um, the face, a 45 gram would be a, uh, adequate for treatment, and so on and so forth. So what are the indications? Uh, topical corticosteroids are inflammatory and pruritic dermatoses that are responsive to corticosteroids, such as psoriasis, eczema, contact dermatitis, and many of the dermatoses um, that we see in practice. Toxicity of to topical corticosteroids, although not common, is the same as the toxicity that occurs with corticosteroids are given systemically. Other common adverse effects include atrophy, striata, telangias, purpuras, acne, periorbital dermatitis, peri I'm sorry, perioral dermatitis, and steroid rosacea. Glaucoma and cataracts may develop after prolonged use of corticosteroids around the eyes, so you need to be very cautious of this. The risk of side effects is increased when topical corticosteroids are used over a prolonged period of time under an occlusive dressing on the face or the intertrogenous locations. Topical anti-infectives such as the antibiotics um, are used for topical prophylaxis in minor cuts, wounds, burns, and skin abrasions. These help to aid for healing. Um, this is why when we were younger we placed bacitracin over a fresh wound to prevent um, bacteria. Also the treatment for, of superficial infections of the skin caused by susceptible organisms that are amendable to local treatment. For the antifungals, these are mostly for the superficial fungal infections and then we have to um, think about um, lice and scabies. These two um, use topical uh, treatment. Um, for the acne uh, preparations, topical and oral preparations um, for acne, um, the acne vulgaris. For local anesthetics, these are indicated for a variety of uses which include minor surgical procedures, suturing and relief of itching or pain from wounds, burns and or hemorrhoids. Local anesthesia does not depress the patient's level of conscience, which makes its use much safer than general anesthesia. Local anesthetics may be applied as a powder, gel, lotion, ointment, spray, or injection into a small area. If a larger area is required for anesthesia, a nerve trunk, such as epidural or spinal, um, or a single nerve may be injected to provide uh, for regional anesthesia. Um, this is often done um, for patients who need um, nail removals for ingrown toenails. You can inject the nerve and um, remove the nail without having to um, inject directly underneath the, the nail. For children in the ER, um, topical um, anesthetics are very useful for um, suturing lacerations. Local anesthetics can be combined with vasoconstrictors such as epinephrine uh, to prolong the action by de decreasing the systemic absorption. However, at the ends of the arteries such as the fingers, toes, penis, nose, um, these vasoconstrictors are not safe for use. In those areas, gangrene may develop because of severe vasoconstriction. So you, um, many times you combine the epinephrine with the local anesthetic. However, in these areas, it is important not to include epinephrine. A number of local anesthetics are used safely on mucous membranes, ulcers, or wounds. If the agents are applied to the oral cavity, however, the patient may have difficulty swallowing. Therefore, food should be withheld for at least one hour to prevent aspiration. Uh, you also need to use with caution in the areas of inflammation. Do not use if solutions are discolored or if they contain precipitates. Um, if the solution does not contain a preservative, it must be discard, 
discarded after opening because some situations of severe anaphylaxis have resulted from the use of local anesthetics have a resuscitation equipment on hand before use or emergency backup plans when any anesthetic is used. Many of us don't think about this for local, however this does occur. Obtain the patient's prior history of local anesthetics use before administration. Uh, patient or guardian should sign a permission form before consenting to any procedure involving local anesthetics. How are the topical agents used? These come in creams, ointments, and pastes. You need to take a small amount of the cream or ointment into the palm of the hand and rub the hands together until the medication has a thin sheen. Then apply a small amount of the ointment or cream as a thin layer to the skin. Excess medication is lost when it rubs off onto the clothing. Apply topical medications with long downward strokes to the affected area. Avoid back and forth strokes because they may cause irritation of the hair follicles. A tongue blade may be used for the application of topicals in a paste form and make sure to wash the hands after application. For lotions, instruct the patient um, to, to shake the container um, and mix the suspension well. Carefully pour a small amount of lotion into the palm of the hand. Apply a thin layer to the skin using firm downward strokes. Avoid using gauze unless the liquid is very thin. Cotton balls should be avoided when medication is applied because they retain the suspended particles of the medication. Wa again, wash your hands after the application. For the sprays and aerosols, shake the container well. Direct spray towards the affected body part while holding the container upright 6 to 12 inches away from the body. Avoid spraying into the eyes. At moderate range, spray lightly covering the surface area um, once. For powders, apply powder lightly to dry skin with gauze or a powder puff as needed. For topical corticosteroids, um, topical corticosteroids diffuse across cell membranes and induce cutaneous vasoconstriction um, depending on their potency. This results in a local anti-inflammatory effect. The topical route is elected when a local effect is preferred to the systemic effect um, produced by the same product given orally. Topical corticosteroids inhibit the migration of macrophages and leukocytes into the area by reversing, reversing vascular dilatation and permeability of small vessels in the upper dermis. Topical corticosteroids are ranked according to their potency, with group 1 as the most potent group and group 7 as the least potent. It's usually sufficient to divide them into high, medium, and low potency groups. Um, frequently, weaker strengths are used because they are considered to be safer. However, adequate strength is necessary for a therapeutic response. Weak over-the-counter hydrocortisone, hydrocortisone is not effective against many of the dermatoses. Um, medium strength steroid from class 3 or 4 is often more effective. If the patient does not respond, treatment should be reevaluated. For all groups, uh, apply the product sparingly two to four times a day. Uh, adequate results are usually achieved with twice a day application in the course of therapy for two to six weeks. To prevent rebound, do not discontinue, discontinue treatment abruptly for long-term use of a potent agent. Instead, reduce the frequency of the application or use a lower potency agent. When desired results are not achieved, stop therapy for four to seven days, then resume treatment with a different agent. A more potent corticosteroid may be needed. A drug from each potency level should be chosen to meet the prescriptive needs of the provider. Tramam cologne is commonly used because it's available generically and comes in a variety of strengths. Uh, 0.5% is a good product of medium strength that is effective for many rashes seen in the office setting. Group 1, uh, the topical corticosteroids are super potent agents. The amount of drug applied to the body per day and the duration of treatment must be carefully monitored. 
Per week, a maximum of 50 grams of cream or ointment should be used. The duration of daily use of a super potent topical corticosteroid should not exceed two weeks, if possible. A period of one week is needed before a group one topical corticosteroid can be used again. This is called cyclic or pulse dosing. Difluorazone disectate can be used under occlusion where betamethasone dipropriate cannot. Occlusive dressing should be used for no longer than 12 hours at a time. Renal suppression skin atrophy and other side effects are possible. Patients who use group 1 topical corticosteroids should be monitored closely for HPA suppression and prescription should limit refills. For those in group 2, these are considered high potency corticosteroids. The risk of adverse effects is reduced if the agents are used for less than 6 to 8 weeks, except on the face or areas where opposing skin surfaces touch, such as the skin folds in the groin, axilla, and breast. Group 3 through 5, these are considered um, preparations of medium to potency. Um, they are most commonly indicated uh, preparations for skin conditions for which a prescription strength of corticosteroid is required. They often have different chemical bases. Treatment duration should not exceed 8 weeks. For groups uh, 6 and 7, these preparations are low potency um, and are useful for covering large areas. Group 7 agents are gen generally over-the-counter preparations that are not strong enough to treat many of the conditions. You can look um, at the standardized guidelines on www.guidelines.gov. Potency is the most important variable when topical corticosteroids is selected. A drug from each potency level should be chosen to meet your prescript the prescriptive needs of the patient. A potency of a steroid is not determined by its strength, but by the vasoconstrictive um, assays. The dose of one corticosteroid does not correlate with the dose of another. Um, for example, um, difluorazone disectate ointment 0.05% is much stronger than the hydrocortisone 2.5%. Vasoconstrictor stricter assays measure skin blanching when an agent is applied to skin under occlusion. A difference in potency may be noted between generic and name brand corticosteroids equivalents. Pharmacists are allowed to substitute generic drugs unless the healthcare provider requests no substitutions or brand necessary. Use the low potency agents in children or large areas for mild conditions and on body sites that are especially prone to corticosteroid damage such as the face, scrotum, axilla, flexures, and skin folds. Steroids have a are potent um, steroids that are potent are corticosteroids used for severe conditions or on a small area of the body. Reserve high potency agents for areas and conditions that are resistant to treatment with milder agents. These may be alternated with milder agents for treatment. Short term intermittent therapy with the use of high potency agents may be more effective and may cause fewer adverse effects than continuous treatment with low potency agents. No fluorinated or high potency corticosteroid should be used on the face. So cardinal um, points of treatment, initiate therapy with an agent of the lowest potency needed and use for, short, uh, for as short a time as possible. Group 1 corticosteroids are used for severe dermatosis or over non-facial um, areas such as psoriasis, severe atopic dermatitis, or severe contact dermatitis. They are especially useful over the palms and soles, which tend to resist topical corticosteroid penetration because of the skin thickness. Preparations of intermediate to potent strength are appropriate for mild to moderate non-facial, non-intrigenous dermatoses. Eyelid and genital dermatoses should be treated with topical corticosteroids of mild strength. Preparations of mild to intermittent strength should be considered when large areas are to be treated because of the likelihood of systemic absorption. 
Treatment should be discouraged when skin conditions have resolved. Tapering the corticosteroid will prevent recurrence of the skin condition, and tapering is best performed by gradually reducing uh, the potency and dosing frequency at two-week intervals. Therapy may be continued for chronic disease that are responsive to treatment. Patients should be monitored for the development of adverse events and or tachyphylaxis, uh, um, which is rapid development of, decrease, of a decreased response. Generic uh, topical corticosteroids are effective for treatment of most skin disorders in the primary care setting. However, generic medications may have slightly less potency or vehicles that are less cosmetically appealing but the substantial cost savings may offset any differences in the efficacy or feel. Um, in children, uh, use of low potency agents should be done in children on large areas for mild conditions. On body, body sites prone to steroid damage, such as the face, scrotum, axilla, flexures, skin folds, um, use more potent agents on uh, more severe conditions in small areas of the body. Um, how to monitor, reevaluate after 10 days to determine whether the condition is responding to treatment. Re monitor for super infections. High potency topical corticosteroids may require periodic evaluation of the HPA axis suppression with the use of morning plasma corticosteroids cortisol, urinary free cortisol, and adrenocorticotrophic hormones, ACTH stimulation tests. If evidence of HPA axis suppression is noted, the healthcare provider should attempt to withdraw the topical corticosteroid very gradually. Decrease the number of applications or change to the use of a less potent corticosteroid to begin withdrawing the corticosteroid treatment from the patient. For patient education, um, remind the patient not to use for longer than the prescribed length of time. For patient variables, um, geriatrics, the geriatric patients are more susceptible to secondary infection when corticosteroids are used. They are also more susceptible to to systemic effects of topically applied medications because their te skin tends to be thin. For pediatric patients, children in comparison with adults have a larger skin surface area to body weight ratio. They may be more susceptible to topical corticosteroid induced HPA axis suppression and Cushing syndrome. In children, symptoms of HPA may include linear growth retardation, delayed weight gain, and low cortisol levels. The least potent corticosteroid that is compatible with effective treatment should be used. Potent corticosteroids should not be used to treat diaper dermatoses. Children younger than 12 years of age generally should not be treated with group 1 or 2 uh, topical corticosteroids. For those pregnant and lactating women, um, most of category C, no reports of de described congenital abnormalities or adverse effects associated with the use of corticosteroids during pregnancy. The use of group one through three corticosteroids in large amounts with an inclusive dressings for long periods of time has been shown to cause fetal abnormalities in animals, although none have been documented in humans. There is a significant association of fetal growth restriction with maternal exposure to potent or very potent topical corticosteroids, but not with mild to moderate topical corticosteroids. Effects on lactation are not known. Um, corticosteroids absorbed systemically can be detected in breast milk in quantities that are not likely to affect the infant. However, you should use with caution. These drugs should not be applied to the nipples prior to nursing. We're going to move on to immunosuppressive drugs. Um, Eladel and Protopic 
um, are used for short-term and intermittent long-term treatment of mild to moderate atopic dermatitis in the non-compromised patients who are at least two years um, of age. A mechanism of action, uh, these are calcineurin inhibitors. They block the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines by T lymphocytes and prevent release of inflammatory mediators from cutaneous mast cells and basophils. They are less likely than topical corticosteroids to cause systemic Im immunosuppression. Um, they also do not cause skin atrophy. Um, warnings for this drug uh, for potential risk of cancer, skin malignancies, and lymphomas have been issued with this class of drug. These are black box warnings based on data from animal studies, the case reports in the pharmacology. These agents may increase the patient's risk of developing cancer. Although this risk is uncertain, the FDA advisory emphasizes the use of these products should strictly follow each product's labeling. Long-term safety, um, longer than one year, is unknown. And do not use um, this in children younger than two years of age because its effect on the immune system um, development is unknown. Again, uh, precautions, the FDA-approved medications guide must be given to the patient when the outpatient prescription new or a refill is dispersed if the medication is to be used without direct supervision by a healthcare provider. Medication um, guides are available um, at their website, um, www.fdagovernment. Um, you can see this website um, link on this um, PowerPoint. For the pharmacokinetics, um, this medication is minimally absorbed through the skin, even when applied to large areas of inflamed skin. Um, it permeates the skin at a lower rate than the, uh, the pimcrolimus, um, permeates the skin at a lower rate than the um, tacrolimus medication. For adverse effects, um, you can get transient local irritation with mild to moderate burning, warmth, stinging, itching, and erythema. For dosage and administration, um, topical calcineurin agents are considered second-line agents um, in the treatment of atopic dermatitis and eczema. They should be limited to use in patients who have failed treatments with other therapies. These should be applied twice a day until resolved, and occlusive dressing should not be um, used with this medication. Antibiotics, anti-effectives, uh, Eupiracin um, is the only drug in the class that is used ex exclusively for topical infection and is the only one um, we'll talk about here. This represents a major advance because it allows tr topical treatment of impetigo. Um, this is, um, that bacitracin is very effective for most topical infections. Triple, triple antibiotic ointments vary in their uh, composition. Um, usually they contain neomycin, which causes a greater number of allergic reactions than are produced by other topical agents. Um, most pathogens cultured from in infective dermatoses are group A beta hemolytic streptococci, staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus pyogens, or any of these pathogens in combination. Gram-negative infections of the skin are relatively rare. Mechanism of action, uh, mupircin blocks protein synthesis of bacteria by binding with the transfer ribonucleic acid tRNA and synthetase. 
Um, for treatment principles, appropriate drug selection depends on the diagnosis and culture whenever possible. Prolonged use of any of these topical agents may result in overgrowth of non-susceptible organisms. Also, you can build up a resistance. Systemic antibiotics are needed for diffuse impetigo, cellulitis, and other more than superficial infections. Apply gauze dressing if indicated. Treatment should be reevaluated if no improvement is seen in three to five days. You need to apply with caution to skin with impaired integrity, integrity because this may allow increased systemic absorption of the drug. Combination antibiotics and corticosteroid preparations often are not indicated because topical corticosteroids can impair the body's ability to fight infection. Again, um, treatment principles apply with uh, caution to skin with impaired integrity because of systemic um, absorption. How to monitor, reevaluate in three to five days if no improvement, change treatment, monitor long-term use especially carefully. Um, prolonged use may result in the development of resistant organisms. It may also result in the overgrowth of non-susceptible organisms, including fungi. Topical neomycin is a contact sensitizer with sensitivity occurring in 5 to 15 percent of patients. Symptoms include itching, reddening, edema, and failure to heal. For patient education, um, these should be covered with a sterile bandage if needed. For um, Bactriban, um, this is used for impetigo caused by Staph aureus, beta hemolytic streptococci, and Staph pyrogens. Um, it is a naturally occurring antibiotic that is structurally different from other topical antibiotics. Bactriban is produced by fermenting uh, Pseudomonas fluorescens. It is useful against infections caused by Staph aureus, including methicillin resistant and beta lactamase producing strains, Staphylococcus epidermis, and Staphylococcus spiro spirotheticus, and Staph pyrogens. They are contraindicated, this medication is contra contraindicated um, with prior sensitivity. Sensitivity to any of the ingredients and use in the eyes. Warnings: It's only for external use. Um, deep infection may require systemic antibiotics, and these should be used. This should be used with caution in large or deep wounds, animal bites, or serious burns. Um, Bactriban has not been formulated for use on mucosal surfaces. surfaces. Intranasal use may produce stinging and drying. Polyethylene glycol is a component of the base. It can be absorbed systemically through damaged skin. Because po polyethylene glycol is excreted via the kidneys, this product should not be used over large areas in patients with renal failure. For patient variables, um, pregnancy and lactation, it's a category B. Adequate studies on pregnant women have not been performed. It is not known whether uh, Bactriban is excreted in breast milk. When a mother is breastfeeding, the use um, of Bactriban should be temporarily discontinued. Pharmacokinetics, uh, there's no measurable systemic absorption. Um, adverse effects, again, local adverse effects consist of burning, stinging, or pain and itching. Less than 1% of the patients have reported rash, nausea, erythema, dry skin, tenderness, swelling, contact dermatitis, and increased drainage. For doses used administration, a small amount of Bactriban should be applied to the affected area three times a day. If no improvement is seen within three to five days, a treatment should be reevaluated, and a gauze dressing may be applied over the topical antibiotic. For the other infect, um, anti-infectives, abacitracin um, is a polypeptide antibiotic which inhibits streptococci, pneumococci, and staphylococci and other gram-positive organisms. Abacitracin is very poorly absorbed through the skin and allergic sensitivity is rare but may develop. For neomycin, um, 
and gentamicin. Uh, these are aminoglucosides. They are effective against gram-negative organisms such as E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, and Enterobacter species. Neomycin is an ingredient in several triple antibiotic ointments such as Neosporin. Gentamicin is more effective than Neomycin against Pseudomonas, um, Aragonosa, Staphylococci, and Group A beta hemolytic streptococci. In patients in renal failure, the drug may accumulate, leading to nephrotoxicity, uh, neurotoxicity, and ototoxicity. Polymyxin B sulfate is most effective um, anaerobic gram neg against anaerobic gram-negative organisms, that is Pseudomonas, um, E. coli, Enterobacter, and Klebsiella species. Gram-positive organisms and most strains of Proteus and Serrata um, are resistant to the polymyxin B. Um, you can see polymyxin B induced toxicity, um, and this may lead to neurotoxicity and nephrotoxicity, and you need to uh, be careful of hypersensitivity. However, um, it rarely occurs with this medication. And um, the newer Altabax um, is active against Staph aureus, Strep pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, and Mortadella cateralis in most anaerobes. It may be used against MRSA. Um, it may be more effective against MRSA than the Bactrovan. For topical antifungal, um, some topical antifungal uh, fungal infections are treated topically and others are treated systemically. The decision to treat topically or systemically depends on the severity of the infection, the extent of the skin infected, and prior treatment history. Fungal infections can affect almost every part of the body. Um, tinea refers to, a derm to the dermophyte fungus that is most common found in skin and nail infections. Dermatophytes infect and live in the dead keratin of the stratum corneum, hair, and nails. They can affect skin and mucosal surfaces and can cause internal infection. Another type of fungi is the yeast-like candida uh, species. The most common is candidiasis. Um, of candidiasis is the candida albicans, which causes infections in skin folds and groin along uh, with red skin and satellite lesions. Tinea infections are classified by body region. Tinea capitis is a, a seborrhea-like scaling of the scalp. Uh, it's commonly caused by trichrophoritin and is often seen in children. Um, it does not fluoresce under a woods lamp, and a negative potassium um, hydroxide or KOH test does not rule out tinea. Diagnosis is made by the brush method of um, culturing. Tinea corpus presents as a paretic uh, ring-shaped lesion or scaly patches on exposed skin surfaces or the trunk in adults who are caring for children uh, with tinea capitis. Any dermophyte may cause this. Um, microscopic exam of scrapings or culture confirms the diagnosis. Tinea cruris uh, manifests as paritic erythematous lesions in the groin area, especially in men who engage in strenuous physical activity involving large amounts of sweating. This is often known as jock itch. Um, microscopic exam or culture confirms the diagnosis. Tinea pedius starts as uh, interdigital toe infection that progresses from dry scaling to maceration, hyperkeratotic skin, and inflammatory vesicular bullises, erupt bullous eruptions. Is most common um, tinea infection seen in primary care, also known as athlete's feet. KOH reveals hyphae and culture is diagnostic. Tinea versicola or pityriasis versicola presents as pale macules found on the trunk, arms, or neck. It's caused by a microsporum uh, furfur, now called pityrosporum opulicular, a yeast. Um, it's part of the normal skin, skin flomer, but may overgrowth. KOH reveals large, blunt hyphae and spores, and culture is not useful in these infections. 
Onchomycosis is a fungal infection of the nails. It is caused by dermophytes, mold, and candida. Mixed infections are common. Microscopic exam confirms diagnosis of these infections as well. Um, for evidence-based um, recommendations, topical alamines and azoles are effective for athletes' foot, um, the tinea pedis, oral itricanazole and oral terbinafine are effective for fungal nail infections. Oral fluconazole and topical silopriox provide modest benefits um, in fungal nail infection. So for cardinal points of treatment, apply a gentle um, massaging into the affected skin and surrounding area. In general, treatment must last long enough for a complete turnover of skin to occur after the symptoms have resolved. If treatment is not carried out long enough, the infection may reoccur. Some infections require maintenance therapy to prevent reoccurrence. Several antifungal topical products, such as ocotranazole, are combined with corticosteroids to relieve itching and inflammation. Once these symptoms have disappeared, the corticosteroid combination should be discontinued. Continued use of corticosteroid antifungal combination may allow development of resistant organisms. Newer antifungals um, reach high concentrations um, in the epidermis and appendages that persist over time, and they have improved the effectiveness of treatment for fungal skin diseases, especially of the nails. Cyclopyrox is the first topical antifungal to be effective against nail uh, fungus. However, most antifungals are effective against the common fungal infections. Our provider should become familiar with a few agents. Select one of the older agents, such as trimazole or myconazole, um, that are available in generic form. Terbinafine, a newer, more potent agent, also over-the-counter, is useful because of its shorter duration of treatment. One factor to consider is cost. The older agents are less expensive. Also consider formulation. Decide which formulation would best deliver the medication to the infection and choose an antifungal to match. Note that the over-the-counter antifungals come in a wider variety of formulations than do the prescription ones. Another factor um, is prior use of antifungals. Ask the patient whether they've used over-the-counter antifungals before coming to the office. The older antifungals are usually available over-the-counter. If the patient has failed a trial of over-the-counter antifungal, he will probably need a more potent um, medication. Um, all azoles are equally effective to uh, tinea pedis. If the patient re develops a resistance to an azole, an alamine may be used. Uh, Terbinafine, available by prescription, is um, one of the more popular choices. How to monitor treatment. Uh, monitor for efficacy and secondary infections. Onset of improvement is variable um, depending on severity of infection, location of the infection, and potency of medications used. Improvement may be seen in one day or may take as long as two or more weeks. Patient variables, older patients are often susceptible to superinfection. Um, and again, pediatrics and uh, pregnant women, uh, need, you need to use with caution. For patient education, before treatment, have the patient wash the skin with soap and water and dry thoroughly. When uh, treating athletes' feet um, or tinea pedis, wear full-fitting ventilated shoes, change uh, the socks and shoes daily. And even though symptoms may abate, uh, continue to follow the treatment plan for the prescribed length of time to prevent relapse. The patient should notify the healthcare provider if symptoms do not improve in two weeks, especially for tinea cruris and corporis, or four weeks for tinea pedis. 
The patient should notify the health care prov provider if symptoms or irritation at the site of application, such as redness, itching, burning, blistering, swelling, or oozing occurs. All are possible signs of sensitization. For uh, the eucanazole and others, um, contraindications, hypersensitivity to any component of the product, warnings, um, they should not be used ophthalmically. Uh, precautions, they're used for external use only. The patient should avoid contact with the eyes. If irritation or sensitivity develops, they should discontinue use and institute appropriate um, therapy. For adverse uh, effects, these include erythema, stinging, blistering, peeling, paritis, urticaria, burning, and general skin irritation. For the topical antivirals, these are indicated for herpes zoster infections. Um, drug resistance has occurred with topical and oral treatment. Um, these include the acyclovir and pencyclovir. The acyclovir or Zovirax um, and Dinavir um, are used oral antivirals for herpes zoster infections. Um, we need to remember that drug resistance has occurred with topical and oral treatment. For the acyclovir, um, is used for management of episodes of herpes um, genitalis and um, limited non-life-threatening monocutaneous herpes simplex infections in immunocompressed patients. This is active against herpes simplex virus, types 1 and 2, varicella zoster virus, Epstein-Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus. Unlabeled uses include herpes labius um, or cold sores. For the pencyclovir, um, this is used for treatment of recurrent herpes labius in adults and active against the herpes simplex virus. Contraindications include hypersensitivity or um, chemical intolerance. For warnings, um, for these medications are for continuous use only. They should not be used in the eyes. Um, for um, pregnancy, most of them are category B. It does enter the breast milk. Um, caution is advised um, for nursing mothers. And the American Academy of Pediatrics um, states that this is compatible. Safety and eth efficacy in children has not been established. For precautions, do not exceed the recommended dosage of administration. Um, however, no data demonstrates that acyclovir will prevent transmission of infection to other people or will prevent reoccurring infection when applied in the absence of signs or symptoms. Viral resistance has not been observed, um, but the possibility still does exist. For adverse effects, mild pain with transient burning, stinging, pruritus, edema, or pain at the application site. For patient education, this is for external use only. Avoid application near the eyes. Ointments must thoroughly cover all lesions. Um, the patient should use a finger cot or rubber glove to apply ointment to prevent the spread of infection and start as soon as there's a suspicion or evidence of infection. A cyclovir ointment is not a cure for herpes simplex infection and is of little benefit in treating recurrent attacks. For dosage and administration, a cyclovir 5% ointment should be applied sufficient amounts to cover the lesions every three hours, at least six times per day for seven days. For pencyclovir, 1% cream, this is applied to the lesions every two hours while awake for four days. Use is for the lips and face only. For docosinol, 10% cream. This um, is applied to the lesion five times a day until um, the lesions heal. Uh, for um, treatment of scabies and pu pedicutal sides, um, 
a mite called Scarpotus scabi causes scabies, a contagious disease. It's frequently found in individuals who are living in close contact with others and in children. Uh, for reasons unknown, black skinned persons rarely acquire scabies. The mite has a 30 day life cycle. Within 60 minutes after arriving on the skin, the fertilized female burrows into the stratum corneum. Um, where she lays two or three eggs a day. As the female advances, she leaves behind the eggs in fecal matter. The eggs reach the age of maturity in, 10, in 14 to 17 days. After the mites reach adulthood, they repeat the cycle. The infested person may not experience any symptoms for about one month after the initial infestation. Um, or until the mites increase in number to approximately 20. Lice cause um, other um, pediculosis, another contagious disease. They are active and are able to move quickly, leading to rapid transmission to others. They are usually found in overcrowded settings or in populations with inadequate hygiene. Elementary school children are at risk. Shared hats or combs can transmit head lice. Black skinned persons are um, from all cultures rarely get lice. The three types of lice can affect humans. Um, head lice, um, body lice, and pubic lice. Head and pubic lice nits can be found on hair shafts. Body lice reside on clothing and appear on the skin only to feed. Lice feed approximately Four, five times a day using their mouths to pierce the skin, injecting irritating saliva, and sucking blood. After feeding, they develop their characteristic rust coloring. Hypersensitivity is induced by the saliva, which is injected when the, they pierce the skin, and possibly by the fecal matter. The life cycle is about a month. Each day the female lays about six eggs, which incubate for eight to ten days. Lice reach maturity in 18 days. Lice are commonly removed by combing the hair with a fine tooth comb. Heat is known to destroy both eggs and live lice. A variety of drug-related um, therapies have emerged that involve hot air treatments and vacuuming of the hair. These may be helpful. Um, therapies when used with medications. Um, there are standardized guidelines on um, the CBC, CDC website um, for evidence-based recommendations. Malathion and permethrin are effective for head lice. Permethrin is effective in scabies. Crotamatron is less effective. Um, in, then permethrin in scabies. Oral ivermectin is likely to be beneficial in scabies. And malathion and permethrin are effective for head lice. For um, cardinal points of treatment for scabies, first line is permethrin cream, 5%, applied to all areas of the body from neck down and washed off after 8 to 14 hours, or ivermectin, 150 to 200 micrograms per kilogram orally as a single dose for adults um, or children. For head lice, uh, first line treatment is permethrin, 1% to 5%. Second line is malathion. Third line is lindane. And fourth line is ivermectin. For children older than six months, benzyl alcohol, 5%, can be used in areas shown to have resistance to um, permethrin or pyrethrins, or in patients with proven infestations refractory to appropriately administered treatment with these drugs. In these situations, children at least two years of age um, may be treated with malathion 0.5%. Spinosad is a new treatment for head lice in patients four years of age or older. This is applied a, um, to cover dry scalp and here 
here using up to 120 milliliter bottle. Um, this must be left on for 10 minutes, then rinse thoroughly with warm water. A second application may be needed if lice are still seen seven days after the first treatment. For body lice, um, first line treatment is permethrin, 1% cream rinse applied to affected areas and washed off after 10 minutes, or pyrethrin um, with piperinol betoxide applied to the affected area and washed off after 10 minutes. Second line is malathion, 0.5% lotion applied for 8 to 12 hours and washed off, or ivermectin, 0.15 milligrams per kilogram minimum to 0.2 milligrams per kilogram maximum repeated in two weeks. Elimination of the scabies or lice requires attention to details. If any step is left out, recontamination is likely. You need to treat all infected people simultaneously. This includes household members for head lice and sexual partners for body lice. Instructions specific to the medication um, selected must be followed completely. Uh, cleaning of the environment is, in, is vital. All infected persons must be treated simultaneously. Unless used properly, lindane has a risk of producing neurotoxicity, including seizures. Malathion also has a remote possibility of causing CNS toxicity. Pyrethrines are natural extracts from the flowers and are available from flowers and are available over the counter. Organisms resistant. Um, to these medications is growing. Treatment failures are common. Permethrin is a synthetic compound that is more effective and less allergenic than the natural products. Significant resistance to permethrin, 1% has developed recently, and 5% is more effective. These products are considered very safe when used according to packaging labeling. Malathion is an organophosphate pesticide. It's, it's probably the fastest at killing most um, life. Disadvantages include the odor and concerns regarding the alcohol vehicle. It is effective against lice that are resistant to permethrin. Lindane is a slow killing pesticide that is stored in adipose and nerve tissue. Concerns about environmental contamination has arisen. Over the past 20 years, it's become less effective than other treatments. Ivermectin is indicated um, for river blindness and strongyloidiasis. It is used for treatment of head lice when all other therapies have failed. It is not oversidal, so a second treatment is necessary. It is given by mouth and is not applied topically. Again, elimination um, requires attention to detail. If any step is left out, recontamination is likely. All treatment, all people need to be treated simultaneously, including household members for head lice and sexual partners for body lice. Instructions specific to the medication selected must be followed. Patients must um, clean their environment um, unless used properly. Lidane has a risk of producing neuro neurotoxicity, including seizures. Methion, methion also has a remote possibility of causing CNS toxicity. How to monitor these medications? You need to reevaluate 10 days after treatment. Consider retreatment if the condition is not resolved. Look for the sources of reinfection. Um, scabies, pruritus, and scabies pruritus may persist for several weeks after treatment and does not necessarily indicate the need for retreatment. Dermatitis may persist for months after treatment and try. Methylone 1.1% may be used to help with the pruritus and dermatitis. In, for lice, if live lice can be found after one week, um, the patient must reapply treatment. For um, patient variables, 
for geriatric patients, um, the elderly patients, fewer cutaneous lesions may occur, but the itching is intense. The elderly may have decreased immunity, and it, this may allow greater numbers of mites to survive and multiply. In nursing homes, it's possible for all residents to have mites. In pediatrics, epidemics are very common in elementary schools. Scabies usually is not suspected in an infant. Those infants may have more generalized spread over the body than adults. Regional lymph nodes may swell. Because lindane is absorbed through the skin and children have more skin surface area relative to body weight, pediatric patients may end up with higher blood levels of this drug. Um, it's contradictory indicated in premature infants because their skin is more permeable and that, than that of full-term infants and their liver enzymes may not be fully developed. For pregnancy and lactation, um, many of these are categories B and C. Lindane is secreted in low concentrations in breast milk. Um, Melotheon's secretion is unknown, but it's absorbed systemically by the mother. The implications of permethrin and crotamatron use during lactation is unknown. For patient education, um, you need to discuss application. The patient should shake the um, solution well, apply the drug as directed, um, treat all members of the household. Um, wash all clo clothing and bed linen, linen in soap and hot water. Unwashable clothing should be sealed in plastic bags for 48 to 72 hours and then dry cleaned. Reapplication is required in 7 to 10 days only if live lice are present. Avoid contact with the eyes and mucous membranes. Um, you should not apply to inflamed skin and flush the eyes if exposed. The patient should discontinue drug use and notify the health care provider if itching of or skin irritation persists. And these drugs um, are intended for external use only. Internal ingestion may produce toxicity. Oils may enhance absorption if oil, using oil-based hair products, wash, rinse, and dry hair well before applying this medication, and use only one application to avoid overdosing. For Eurax, um, contraindications, known sensitivity to of any of the components, warnings, um, it's for external use only, do not apply to acutely inflamed skin, raw weeping surfaces, eyes, urethral, um, medius, or mouth. You need to use with caution in children. Safety and effectiveness is not, has not been established. The adverse effects, um, there are many. You need to look these up when um, prescribing this medication for overdosage. Um, ingestion causes burning sensation in the mouth, mucosal irritation of the mouth, throat and stomach, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. For dosage and administration, um, for scabies, thoroughly massage the lotion into the skin of the whole body from the chin down, paying particular attention to all folds and creases. Wash off after 8 to 12 hours. A second application is advisable 24 hours later. Um, change the clothing and bed linen for the next morning and take a cleansing bath 48 hours after the last application. For lindane, um, contraindications include hypersensitivity, seizure disorders, acutely inflamed skin, raw weeping surfaces, or other skin conditions that may increase systemic um, absorption, crust crusted uh, Norwegian scabies and other skin conditions that may increase systemic absorption, such as atopic dermatitis, dermatitis or psoriasis. Uh, for warnings, lindane penetrates the skin and has a potential for CNS toxicity. The young are at greater risk of toxicity. These are 
This is contraindicated in neonates and used with caution in patients who weigh less than 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. This is not intended for use in infants. Uh, simultaneous applications of cream, ointments, or oils may enhance its absorption, do not leave on longer than the recommended time, and be extremely careful for not to overdose, especially in children. Although lindane has shown an increased incidence of liver tumors in mice, derivatives of hexachlorocyclohexane have demonstrated carcinogenicity. Use, use only as a second line drug. Additional um, restrictions, the FDA, um, an FDA approved medication guide must be distributed when the outpatient prescription new or refill is dispensed. If this medication is to be used without the direct supervision of a healthcare provider, um, you can obtain these medication guides at um, www.fdagovernment. Um, for drug interactions, although no drug interactions have been specifically documented to occur with lindane, the manufacturer states a precaution regarding the use of lindane in individuals receiving medications that lower a seizure, the seizure threshold, such as um, some of the antidepressants, um, certain antipsychotics, century, centrally active anticholinestrases, meperidine, um, methylcarbonyl, theophilin, certain immunosuppressants, um, certain antimicrobials, um, or radiographic contrast agents. You should look these up prior to prescribing. For overdosage, um, overdose or oral ingestion can cause CNS excitation. Seizures may occur if taken in sufficient quantities. For babies um, with cream and lotion products, apply a thin layer to dry skin and rub in thoroughly. Allow the drug to remain on the skin for 8 to 12 hours and then remove by uh, thoroughly washing. Again, for overdosage, um, Overdose or oral ingestion can cause CNS excitation. Seizures may occur if taken in sufficient quantities. Uh, for dosage and administration, scabies um, with cream and lotion products apply a thin layer to dry skin and rub in thoroughly. Allow the drug to remain on the skin for 8 to 12 hours and then remove by thorough washing. Use, use of 2 ounces is sufficient for an adult. Apply the low lotion from the neck to the toes. Scabies really um, affect the head of children or adults, but this may occur in infants. One application is usually, cured, usually a cure. Many patients exhibit persistent paritis after treatment. A reapplication is not recommended. For um, head lice and pubic lice, apply the shampoo in sufficient quantities, two ounces maximum, only to thinly cover the hair of the pubic area, rub into the hair until the lather forms, and then um, you may use, they may use a small amount of water and leave in place for four minutes. Have the patient wash thoroughly and remove knits with a knit comb or tweezers. Reapplication, again, is not recommended. Um, treat sexual contact. Um, at the same time. Um, for Ovid, methylthion, um, this um, mechanism of action is, um, it has a low societal and ovocidal properties. It's an organophosphate um, liquid for topical application to the hair and scalp that acts via cholinesterase in inhibition. Um, it binds to the hair shaft, thus giving a residual protection against reinfestation. It's contraindicated um, for those who are hypersensitive to any component, and use in neonates and or infants is not recommended. For precautions, um, the topical agents can a flammable alcohol, uh, avoid exposing, 
exposing the lotion um, and wet hair to open flames or electric heat, including hair dryers. While applying the lotion or while the hair is wet, the patient um, or person applying the lotion should not smoke. Exposure to uh, carbonate and organophosphate type insecticides or pesticides in individuals using methylon may increase the possibility of increased systemic absorption of these pesticides or insecticides via the skin or respiratory tract. Do not use in children younger than two years of age. Um, for adverse effects, it irritates um, the scalp. Irritation of the scalp can occur. And for drug act interactions, no drug interactions have been reported with a lotion. Malathion inhibits cholinesterase. Um, therefore, theoretically, a reaction with some aminoglycosides, anesthetics, anti uh, myogranis or cholinesterase inhibitors, or succinylcholine succyl may occur. For overdosage, methion is a weaker cholinesterase inhibitor than the other organophosphates, but overdose symptoms are the same. The symptoms of toxicity could be delayed for 12 hours. These symptoms include abdominal pain, anxiety, unsteadiness, confusion, diarrhea, labored breathing, dizziness, drowsiness, increased uh, sweating, watery eyes, muscle twitching, pinpoint pupils, seizures, and slow heartbeat. Finally, dosage and administration. Sprinkle a lotion on dry hair and rub gently until the scalp is thoroughly moistened. Pay special attention to the back of the head and neck. Allow the hair to dry naturally. Do not use heat. Leave uncovered. After 8 to 12 hours, wash the hair with a non-medicated shampoo. Rinse and use a fine tooth comb to remove dead lice and eggs. If required, repeat with a second application in 7 to 9 days. Further treatment is generally not necessary. Evaluate and treat other family members as needed. Um, a recent study found that malathion 0.5%, one or two 20-minute applications is 98% effective. For uh, eliminate or nix, um, this is a synthetic pyrethrin. It's active against lice, ticks, mites, and fleas. It acts on a parasite on the parasite nerve cell membranes by disrupting the sodium channel current and slowing repolarization, causing para paralysis of the pests. Um, it's contraindicated for those with hypersensitivity. Um, or any component of the formulation. Lotion is contraindicated for use in infants younger than two months of age. Um, it has been associated with carcinogenesis in mice and an increase in pulmonary ad ad adenomas and benign, benign liver adenomas have been seen. Um, these are uh, warnings of using the drug. For precautions, scabies and head lice infestations may be accompanied by erythema, swelling, and itching. Um, this medication may exacerbate these problems. For adverse reactions, mild transient symptoms such as burning, stinging, pruritus, numbness, tingling, erythema, edema, or rash. Um, if the drug is swallowed, um, the patient needs to have gastric lavage um, and general supportive measures um, for treatment of overdosage. For dosage and administration, uh, for scabies, thoroughly massage in the skin from the head to the soles of the feet, treat infants two months or older, on the hairline, neck, scalp, temple, and forehead. Remove the cream by washing after 8 to 14 hours. Usually 30 grams is sufficient for an average adult. One application is usually curative. For um, Head lice, 1% um, um, Nix cream rinse. This is used after the hair has been washed with shampoo, rinsed with water, and towel dry. Apply a sufficient volume to saturate the hair and scalp. Allow it to remain on the hair for 10 minutes before rinsing off, the wa off with water. A single treatment um, eliminates head lice infestation. Combing of nits is not required before therapy. 
therapeutic efficacy, but may be done for cosmetic reasons. Resistance to um, NYX 1% is increasing. The Eliminite, which is 5% on um, topical cream, may be applied to clean dry hair and left on for 8 to 14 hours. Now we'll move on to um, topical and oral acne preparations. Acne is a disease that involves the uh, sebaceous glands. Uh, these glands, sebaceous glands remain small throughout childhood. At puberty, hormone levels cause increased gland size and spume secretion. The chest, face, back, and upper arms have the largest and most um, numerous sebaceous glands. Acne may last for about eight to twelve year, eight to twelve years if not treated. It's classified as mild, or moderate, or severe. Severe being the cystic acne. Mild acne consists of more than twenty condones or fewer than fifty inflammatory papules or or a lesion count of less than thirty. Moderate acne includes fifteen to 50 papules and pustules um, with condoms or rare cysts. Total lesion count may range from 30 to 125. Severe acne involves primary, primary inflammatory nodules and cysts. All present are um, condom papules and pustules or, or total lesion count of greater than 125. Sebum is secreted into the follicular canal. Acne begins with the blockage of this canal. This is an irritant of fatty acid, causes inflammation and swelling, and forms a condom. Propambacterium acnes, an anaerobe, is a normal skin resident and is, pr is the primary contaminant of the sebum. Um, this secretes chemotactic factors that attract leukocytes causing the inflammation. For treatment principles, um, evidence-based recommendations um, include benzoyl peroxide um, as being effective for moderate acne, topical clindamycin and erythromycin effective for inflammatory lesions in mild, moderate, or severe acne, topical treat Tonium effective for inflammatory and non-inflammatory lesions in mild and moderate acne. Alzalic acid um, effective for inflammatory and non-inflammatory lesions in mild and moderate acne. And finally, estrogen containing oral contraceptives can be useful in some women. For the cardinal um, points of treatment. The effectiveness of treatment depends on, on the motivation of the patient. If the acne bothers the patient more than it bothers, um, if the acne bothers the parent more than it bothers the teen patient, then compliance will be low. The face is usually involved um, and exposed for all to see. The trunk may also be affected. Acne has a psychologic as well as a physical effect on the individual, and this must be addressed with the patient. Treatment depends on the severity of acne. Non-pharmacological treatment addresses the contributing factors such as hormones and mechanical causes. Much patient education is needed. Diet is not considered causative in acne, but the patient should avoid foods that trigger exacerbation. In general, uh, topical or oral antibiotics are effective for inflammatory um, lesions and topical retinoids are effective for common donal lesions. In addition to the drugs mentioned, um, oral contraceptives are commonly used to treat acne in women. Much variation uh, has been noted in response to treatment. Different combinations of medications may be tried. Usually, 6 to 12 weeks are needed to determine the effectiveness of treatment. Modification of treatment is often needed. Once the inflammation is under control, medication may be tapered as tolerated. For pharmacological treatment, salicylic acid, um, available over the counter alone or in combination, often with benzoyl peroxide, is well. It is a well tolerated keratolytic agent that causes less irritation than benzoyl peroxide. 
Benzoyl peroxide is an oxidizing agent that is bactericidal. Um, it's available over the counter in the higher strengths by prescription. It may be used with salicylic acid, topical or oral antibiotics, or a topical retinoid. The 2.5% concentration of benzoyl peroxide seems to be as, as effective as higher concentrations, but as is less irritating. Use water-based, not alcohol-based preparations to reduce irritation. For the oral and topical antibiotics, many antibiotic topical preparations are used for the treatment of mild to moderate acne. Doxycycline and minocycline are often more effective than the tetracycline. Um, other topical antibiotics include clindamycin and erythromycin. Both are antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. Clindamycin is less irritating. Topical antibiotics are used for um, mild papular acne and for patients who refuse or cannot tolerate oral antibiotics, or to wean patients who are under good control from oral to topical preparations. Topical antibiotics are generally safe and well tolerated. Bacteria resistance can occur, and this is becoming an increasing problem. Skin irritations are usually mild. Um, oral antibiotics are effective in inflammatory acne. Um, they may decrease the effectiveness of oral contraceptives, so this must be kept in mind for women. The most commonly used oral antibiotic is tetracycline and erythromycin. Resistance to erythromycin is becoming more common. Um, tetracycline has an anti-inflammatory effect and is given uh, at a dose of 500 milligrams of twice a day. Other antibiotics used include doxycycline, minocycline, clindamycin, amoxicillin, and abactrim. These antibiotics are given um, for months at a time. When the skin is clear, you need to taper the antibiotic to the lowest effective dose and then consider topical antibiotics. A recent study showed the topical and oral antibiotics for acne increase the patient's risk for upper respiratory tract infections, so keep this in mind. Again, oral contraceptives may be effective for acne. For the topical retinoids, um, these are generally used as second or third line therapy. Topical retinoids are vitamin A derivatives of that normalized keratinization. They are very effective for the treatment of uh, condom and are effective against both inflamed, inflamed and non-inflamed acne lesions. These agents can be used alone or in combination with the antibiotics. Um, their usefulness is limited by irritation, however. Isotretonin, another vitamin A derivative, is a third-line product for severe um, acne. It has major medical and legal implications, especially when prescribed to females of childbearing ages. It's known to be a um, pterogen that is, that is available only through a program provided by the manufacturer. Um, it may be prescribed only by a specialty trained practitioner, and primary care providers may see patients on this medication um, for possible follow-up and for other medical problems, however, usually do not prescribe it. The healthcare provider must be aware of and must understand the potential drug-related severe health problems and common side effects of this medication. Um, it is extremely expensive, and most insurance will not reimburse um, for the patient's costs. So keep this in mind. How do we monitor these patients? Um, acne may get worse before it gets better. Improvement is not, may not be seen for four to six weeks. Old lesions may take months to fade. Watch for adverse effects of the medication. Improvement is judged by the number of new lesions that form after six to eight weeks of therapy. Additional time is required for improvement on the back and chest. Uh, for patient variables, pediatrics, acne usually begins in puberty. It becomes less active in the late teens. Safety and efficacy has not been established in children younger than 12 years of age. And uh, isotretonin may cause premature closure of the epithesis um, for the bones. Um, so this needs to be kept. Um, in the back of your mind when um, these patients come to you on this medication. Uh, pregnancy and lactation, um, most are category C, including benzoyl peroxide and tritonian. Um, category X um, for iso 
uh, Tritonian. It's very tetragenic in any amount, even for a short period of time. If pregnancy occurs, abortion must be discussed with the patient. The effects of these medications during lactation is not known. For race, um, whites are affected to a greater extent than any other race. And for gender, acne affects both males and females. Males frequently have the most severe cases, but the most persistent cases tend to occur in females. For patient education, um, current, current research does not show a link between diet and acne, um, such as chocolate and french fries increase acne. However, um, patients should avoid such foods if they believe it may trigger the outbreaks. Instruct the patient to wash the face two or three times a day with warm water and mild soap. Uh, they should not scrub the face because this may aggravate the condition. Uh, they should, women should use water-based makeup, avoid oily moisturizers and skin cleansers, uh, avoid digging and squeezing um, the condoms. These may aggravate the condition and cause um, scarring. Acne may get worse at the beginning of any treatment. Um, the patient um, needs to be reassured and be continue tra treatment because this is usually only uh, temporary. The patient needs to be consistent and follow all instructions. Um, notify the healthcare provider of any problems. Um, uh, the healthcare provider will needs to determine whether treatment should be discontinued. Um, the patient should use mild soap to avoid skin irritation. For benzyl um, peroxide, this is an uh, antibacterial keratolytic product. It, um, it's contraindicated for those who have hypersensitivity to it. And there's a cross sensitivity with benzoic acid derivatives, such as cinnamon, and certain topical anesthetics. Um, for warnings, um, reports of tumor development in, ro in rodents has been noted. Benzyl um, peroxide was downgraded in 1991 by the FDA from a category one, safe and effective, to a category three, data insufficient to permit classification. No evidence um, suggests that benzyl peroxide is a tumor promoter in humans. However, the FDA could not um, ignore this. For precautions, the agent is for external use only. Contact with eyelids, lips, mucous membranes, and highly inflamed or damaged skin should be avoided. If accidental contact occurs, the patient should rinse um, with copious amounts of water. The patient should discontinue use if severe reaction develops, and then um, appropriate therapy should be instituted. Um, the product use may be resumed after the reaction clears with less frequent applications. The color of hair and fabric may be lightened as a result of the oxidizing effects of benzoyl peroxide, so they need to be cautious of this. Um, some benzoyl peroxide products contain sulfites. This may cause allergic reactions, including anaphylactic symptoms and asthmatic episodes in the general population. The prevalence of sulfite sensitivity is unknown. It is most frequently seen in those patients with asthma. Um, benzoyl peroxide is not absorbed systemically, and its mechanism of action um, is antibacterial, especially against um, P. acnes. It's believed to, that bacterial proteins are oxidized by the active or free radical oxygen as the levels of the um, P. acne lipids and free fatty acids drop, resolution of acne um, occurs. Benzoyl peroxide has a drying action and removes excess spume, which leads to desquamation, drying and peeling of the skin. For adverse effects, again, irritation, um, drug interactions, simultaneous use of benzoyl peroxide with a tritonian may increase skin irritation. 
transient skin discoloration may occur with simultaneous use of sunscreens that contain para-aminobenzoic acid or the PABA. Um, so patients need to be cautious of this. For overdosing, excessive scaling, erythema, and edema are these the effects of overdosage. Uh, treatment involves discontinuing the product use and applying cool compresses, emollients, or low-dose topical hydrocortisone. For patient education, um, avoid the use of other skin irritants such as sunlight, sun lamps, and other topical medications unless approved. Um, the patient should read the instructions um, included in the product. Before use, they must wash the, in the treatment area and allow it to dry and keep the product away from eyes, mouth, and mucous membranes. They should rinse with copious amounts of water if contact occurs. A transitory feeling of warmth or slight stinging may occur um, with use. Um, the patient should expect dryness and peeling. They should decrease frequency of use or discontinue it if excessive redness and discomfort occurs. Discontinue use and contact the health care provider if, an ir if irritation is excessive. The patient should use water-based cosmetics um, when using this product. For Retin-A, um, its unlabeled uses include topical treatment for different skin cancers and various other dermatological conditions to enhance the percutaneous absorption of topical minoxidil and other topical agents and to improve the appearance of photodamaged skin, especially wrinkling and liver spots. The mechanism of action, this drug promotes and increases cell turnover of both the normal follicle and condoms. Cohesion between keratinized cells is decreased and acts, uh, works on the acne precursor lesion. The microcomedones causing fragmentation and expulsion of the microplug. Closed comedones are converted to open ones and will continue um, use these the formation is prevented. Um, it's contraindicated for patients with hypersensitivity to any component of the product or those with sunburns. For warnings, um, this medication is for external use only. It's to be kept away from the eyes, mouth, angles of the nose and mucous membranes. Severe local erythema and peeling at application site may be um, induced. You, the patient should use product less frequently or stop using temporarily or completely if um, irritation occurs. If applied to reddened skin, a severe local reaction may occur. For pharmacokinetics, um, it is metabolized by the skin and approximately 5% of the compound is excret excreted in the urine and feces. For drug interactions, uh, stratum corneum becomes thin with continual application of this drug. This makes the skin more susceptible to irritation from sunburn and skin damage um, and irritation from wind, cold, or dryness. Cosmetics, extringents, alcohol, and acne soaps that have drying properties um, may interact and strong concentrations of spices or limes may increase the possibility of interaction with this drug. The patient should use cautious when administering with sulfur, um, benzoyl peroxide, or salicylic acid because of significant skin irritation may result. Finally, overdosage um, will lead to severe localized skin irritation. For the oral retinoids, um, this is used for severe cystic acne, not responding um, to um, conventional therapy. It must be not must not be used for patients who are pregnant. Um, the risk of deformed infant is extremely high if pregnancy occurs while the patient is taking this drug in any amount or even for a short period of time. Only dermatologists should be prescribing this medication. A primary health care provider may, ask to may be asked to monitor the patient while on this medication. Um, they must be monitored closely 
um, in, for pre-treatment, one negative serum pregnancy test prior to initiating treatment must be obtained. A second test must be performed during the first five days of the menstrual period, immediately preceding the start of therapy. A complete blood cell count, liver function test, triglyceride levels should be obtained. After two to three weeks of treatment, triglyceride levels then should be um, obtained then every four weeks thereafter. For levels exceeding 350 to 400 milligrams per deciliter, repeat in two to three weeks. For levels exceeding 7 to 800 milligrams per deciliter, stop the medication because of the risk of pancreatitis. After four to six weeks of treatment, a CBC and liver function test should be obtained. A monthly pregnancy test must be performed before the patient receives a refill. For precautions, um, has the potential for causing many severe health problems, headaches which may be indicative of benign intracranial hypertension, especially when combined with minocycline and tetracycline, corneal opacities, decreased night vision, inflammatory bowel disease, hypertriglyceremia, hepatotoxicity, and musculoskeletal symptoms such as arthralgias may occur. Diabetic Diabetic patients may demonstrate problems with control of their blood sugars. As with inhalation of all acne treatment, the condition, uh, I'm sorry, as with initiation of all acne treatment, uh, the condition may temporarily be ex exacerbated. Um, this medication is metabolized in the liver and 99.9% .9 binds to plasma albumin. It is excreted in the urine and bile. Its mechanism of action, um, exact mechanism is unknown. Uh, the drug, drug decreases the amount and composition of um, subin lipid. This reduction is maintained while the patient is taking the drug. After treatment has ended, the composition returns to normal, but production may not return to pretreatment levels. For adverse effects, uh, chelitis may be handled easily with the use of petroleum products such as Aquaphor. Dry eyes may make the patient unable to wear contact lenses. For patient education, Roche Laboratories Pregnancy Prevention Program includes a patient qualification checklist, information about treatment, contraception, and serum pregnancy testing information, an optional referral form to expert contraception counseling, patient self-evaluation consent forms, and a follow-up survey. They should um, contact the um, manufacturer. For local anesthetics, um, local anesthesia does not depress the patient's level of consciousness, which makes it much safer than general anesthesia. Local anesthetics may be applied as a powder, gel, lotion, ointment, spray, or injection into a small area. If a larger area is required for anesthesia, a nerve trunk, epidural, spinal, or single nerve may be injected to provide uh, for regional anesthesia. Um, local anesthetics may be combined with vasoconstrictors, again, epinephrine, to prolong action by decreasing systemic absorption. However, at the ends of the arteries, such as the fingers, toes, penis, and nose, vasoconstrictors are not safe for use. In these areas, gangrene may develop because of severe vasoconstriction. Um, number of local agents are used safely on mucous membranes, ulcers, or wounds. If agents are applied to the oral cavity, the patient may have difficulty swallowing. A patient should not eat at least one hour um, after application to prevent aspiration. Mechanism of action, local anesthesia causes loss of sensation by first blocking nerve conduction in the small unmyelinated fibers that carry pain and then progressing to the larger myelinated fibers for pressure and motor function. The extent of anesthesia depends on a variety of factors including the amount of medication um, used, body temperature, pH, and the amount of protein binding and dilution by tissue fluids. Local anesthetics work by blocking the flow of sodium ions, thereby preventing depolarization of the nerve fiber and conduction or transmission of the impulse. 
Local anesthetics are divided into two groups, esters and amides. Esters are derivatives of para and amino benzoic acid. Hypersensitivity reactions may occur with esters, which are metabolized by hydrolysis. Amides are derivatives of aniline. Allergies to drugs in the amide group are rare. These are metabolized primarily in the liver and then excreted primarily in the urine as metabolites. These two groups differ in pharmacokinetics, including protein binding, onset, duration, and allergic potential. The amides are generally more useful clinically. Local anesthetics provide anesthesia for variable lengths of time. Experial, a post-surgical injection is designed to delay and shorten the need for pain relief from opioids such as morphine. The drug, when administered at the surgical site, combines the anesthetic bupivacaine and Depofoam, a fatty product for holding medicine inside microscopic chambers for extended release. This product can provide pain relief with reduced opioid consumption for up to 72 hours and represents an addition to the currently available post-surgical pain management options. For pharmacokinetics, absorption is complete unless epinephrine is, is added. Onset depends on the type of block, medication, body fluids, pH, and temperature. The amides vary in protein binding, lidocaine, and Mepivacaine are bound moderately, atolacaine and bupivacaine are highly bound. The esters are hydrolyzed in the plasma by uh, pseudocholinesterase, and the amides are degraded by liver enzymes. Esters are less stable than the amides. Esters are metabolized um, to paraaminobenzoic acid, which may cause a severe reaction. Peak concentration of the drug depends on the type, but is usually reached in 10 to 30 minutes. Um, to monitor these patients, patient variables, dosage varies according to the weight of the patient, the site, and type of procedure. Children and the elderly are especially prone to aspiration when agents are used in the oral cavity. For pregnancy and lactation, these are categories B and C. Monitor for adverse effects, including cardiac arrhythmia, shock, and or local reactions. Blood pressure, respiratory status, blood flow to the area, ability to swallow, and motor control and sensation also should be monitored in these patients. Patients may need to be placed on cardiac monitors depending on the type of procedure and agent used. For patient education, uh, reactions to local anesthetics range from dermatitis to an anaphylactic shock. The patient may lose all sensation, including the sensation of temperature, pressure, and touch. Uh, these areas must be protected until the sensation returns. Motor function is lost only in concentrations of the drug um, present over time, such as um, for spinal anesthesia. If regional anesthesia has been achieved, the area of the body must be protected from heat, cold, and pressure because those senses will not be intact. Local application to the oral cavity results in a decreased ability to swallow and could result in trauma to the buco buco mucosa or tongue. Patients should be advised to use, um, to use topical anesthetics exactly as prescribed. Aerosol should not be inhaled. Um, you need to provide instruction for rectal applications. If hemorrhoids are bleeding, systemic absorption will be increased. Suppositories should be refrigerated before use and moistened with water or lubricant before insertion. For the short-acting local anesthetics, such as Novocaine or Procaine, this is um, indicated for spinal anesthesia primarily and is contraindicated for uh, hypersensitivity to Procaine or other ester-type anesthetics. Um, patient, um, for warnings, you need to have resuscitation equipment on hand during its use. Um, the effect on fetal development has not been determined and many potential uh, CAM interactions with dermatological products um, has been observed. For precautions used with caution in patients with heart block, rhythm disturbances, hyperthyroidism, or other endocrine disease, 
or as well as shock. Use lowest dose possible for effective anesthesia, especially in children or in elderly or debilitated patients. Consult um, standard references for exact amount of the medication uh, for specific procedure or technique. And if vasopressor is added, use with caution in patients already on any medication um, likely to raise pressure, for example, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. For patient variables, again, elderly and children, use caution. Pregnancy and lactation, these are considered category C. Um, and used with caution. For adverse effects, this may provoke CNS and cardiovascular symptoms. And for overdosage, uh, hypotension and cardiac arrest are possible. Other symptoms include nervousness, dizziness, headache, urticaria, and edema. Uh, for intermittent acting local anesthesias, lidocaine, uh, xylocaine, with or without epinephrine, this is used as a local anesthetic and administered topically in a gel, ointment, spray, lotion, or cream. It can be infiltrated into an area for local anesthetic or nerve block. And it has um, additional use in an antiarrhythmic, in which case it's administered IV by direct injection or by continuous infusion. This is the most common um, medication used for suturing. For contraindications, um, again, hypersensitivity to lidocaine or local anesthetics of the Amid group. For warnings, have emergency resuscitation equipment um, and drugs on hand due to its antiarrhythmic um, properties. Uh, for precautions, safety of use depends on the proper dose technique and rapid, re, um, rapid administration in emergencies. Um, you need to consult standard textbooks for specifics depending on um, what the medication is being used for. For patient variables, it's considered a category B in pregnancy, and it is not known if it's excreted in the human breast milk. For overdosage, um, reactions are similar to other immediate anesthetics and range from CNS manifestations to nervousness and euphoria to twitching, convulsions, and unconsciousness. Allergic manifestations include urticaria, edema, and anaphylactoid reactions. Cardiovascular reactions include bradycardia, hypotension, and shock. And neurologic reactions include loss of sensation or motor control and loss of bowel or bladder function. Finally, the long-acting um, local anesthetics include pipivacaine, uh, marcaine, with or without epinephrine. This is used for dental and oral surgeries, minor surgical procedures, and therapeutic procedures such as joint injections. Only the lowest concentration um, is recommended for obstetric procedures, and chemically the product is related to lidocaine but lasts longer. It's contraindicated uh, for those with known sensitivity to pivacaine or any other local anesthetics and is not used for um, obstetric paracervical uh, blocks. Uh, for warnings, do not use 0.075% uh, for obstetric anesthesia. Use only if resuscitation equipment and drugs are available. Do not use with epinephrine if patient is on an NAOIS or antidepressants of the um, um, imatriptyline or imipramine type because of hypotension may result. Because results are long lasting, warn the patient of um, any injury to, or trauma to the lips, bu buccal mucosa, and tongue. Um, for patient variables, pediatrics is not re recommended for use in children under 12 years of age. And um, pregnancy and lactation is considered class uh, category C. Overdosages, um, same as other amide, CNS, cardiovascular, and allergic symptoms. For doses and administration, a dose varies with the procedure, the area required, the patient's condition, vascular, um, vascular um, condition of the tissues, and duration of the anesthesia desired. 
um, this medication needs to um, be individualized um, dosaging. 